Whether she knew it or not, Chelsea Handler trolled the right wing pretty hard with a video that she made for The Daily Show titled A Day in the Life of a Childless Woman. Now the sketch is readily available online. I highly suggest you watch it. It's clearly meant to note preposterous things that she allegedly does as a childless woman. But the best part about it was the conservative reaction to it, which we'll get to in a moment. You don't want to miss that. First, let me give you some more details about what she says in the video. So in the very beginning, she says that she wakes up in the morning. She's like, I wake up at 6 a.m. I remember that I have no kids to take to school. So I take an edible, masturbate, and go back to sleep. Which is pretty hilarious and sounds like a good time. Now, later in the video, she describes more outlandish things that she obviously doesn't do. But again, it's a sketch. It's meant to be funny. It's meant to be fun. She's like, I go to my favorite spot in Paris and grab a croissant. Then she says, the weightlessness of my existence has generated me, or I'm sorry, granted me superhuman powers. Okay. Obviously, that's not true. It's just meant to be fun. And then she says, I teleport myself back home. Then I get ready for a night out with whatever hot guy I met on Raya that morning or Raya. Now it's time for a workout. So I hit Mount Everest for a quick climb. And then later she says, I invented a time machine to go back in time and kill Hitler. So again, the video is fun. It's meant to be funny. I thought it was hilarious, but conservatives lost it. Because for some reason, they care deeply about whether or not we're procreating. And for some reason, they are hell bent on putting out into the world that childless mothers are the most miserable people on the planet. Okay, look, I can't speak for all women, obviously. I can't speak for all women who have not had children. I do not have children, and I love it. I love it for a lot of different reasons. Living in America and seeing all of the threats and risks to kids, like for instance, the weirdo parents that would show up at board school board meetings or would show up on campuses and harass children who wanted to wear masks. Like I would murder someone. I don't want to go to prison. You get what I'm saying? It's all about knowing yourself and knowing whether or not you would be a good parent. I'd be a good parent, but my rage at anyone who even slightly offended my kid would be pretty devastating for my life and possibly the life of the person who offended my kid. <laughs> but anyway, with that said, why don't we first go to Tucker Carlson's conversation about this with his co-chud, some guy named Jesse. That's what you see women like Chelsea Handler, feminists like Chelsea Handler going with now. They've been lied to by their society forever, yeah. that you could be a girl boss and you can do anything a man can do, which everyone who's ever seen a woman back up a vehicle knows that's not true. But either way, they've been told that they should do career and don't, uh, don't do a family or anything like that. And soon you're Chelsea Handler. Soon it's Valentine's Day and your womb resembles a dried up tumbleweed blowing down an old western town and your Valentine's Day date for the 10th year in a row is a 10 year old copy of Magic Mike and a half full bottle of Xanax and you're trying to pretend like you're happy, but you're not happy. And it's actually not her fault. She's been lied to by a country that has lost its way. How do you know she's not happy? Like, I could just say that about you. I mean, that guy looks miserable. Like, wh- how? why do you think that she's drinking bottles of wine and, and guzzling down half bottles of Xanax? Like, just completely made up completely made up. But also, look, this is the most important point that I want you to really absorb as we continue giving you more details about this. Um, Why do you care? Like, why do they care? Why are they so hell bent on ensuring that Chelsea Handler's miserable? And why do they care about her decision to not have kids? I don't even care. I, I have difficulty caring enough about my own friends having kids. Why would I care about a complete stranger and whether or not they're having kids? Who cares? Who cares? But there's more. There's Matt Walsh who says nothing more pathetic than the coping done by a childless woman pushing 50. She could have had kids and still be doing basically whatever she wants with her life today. That's not true. Kids aren't toddlers forever. She could have her freedom and a family. Instead, she'll die alone. You know, there's a lot of commentary coming from men on this issue. But fact of the matter is, having a child when you have a wonderful, supportive husband 
is still incredibly challenging, okay? Having a child with a typical husband who isn't gonna come home after a long day of work to do the cooking, to do the cleaning, to do the diaper changes and all that stuff, that's torture. So the idea that like, you could pop out all these babies and still have it all. I mean, they're not toddlers forever. You're right, they're not toddlers forever. Later, they end up going to school. You gotta figure out whether or not the public school in your neighborhood has been defunded to the point where it's just untenable to send your kid there. So then you gotta do lottery programs to see if some charter school take your kid. If that doesn't work, you gotta consider maybe $25,000 for a private school. Yeah, you're right, they're not toddlers forever. After that, they go through their teen years. I don't know how old Matt Walsh's kids are, but I can't wait for him to experience that. I was a teen once, I remember what I was like. No, having kids is incredibly difficult. And for once, finally, in this country, parents are being honest about it. And I love that they're being honest about it. They're being honest about the postpartum depression. They're being honest with the medical bills associated with maternity and childbirth. They're being honest about how incredibly hard it is to be a woman who's working toward career objectives, career goals, while raising babies. It is hard, and it's especially hard in a country that provides absolutely no support. We'll get to that in a moment. But more comments. Oh, Raya uh, Raychik, whatever her name is, Libs of TikTok woman, says, uh, This is one of the saddest videos I've ever seen. Really? That's one of the saddest videos you've ever seen? I mean, we're inundated with awful video content on a daily basis, but a comedic video featuring Chelsea Handler celebrating the fact that she made the right decision for her is the saddest video you've ever seen. Okay. Ben Shapiro, the best thing about this video is that it features her explaining that she can do whatever she wants as a person with no kids. And so she names a bunch of stuff she didn't do because her actual life consists of drinking a bunch of wine and being really, really sad. But how do you know that, Ben? And yeah, she listed things that she didn't actually do because it was meant to be a sketch. It's just a funny video. But we should talk a little bit about what it's like to be a parent in America who doesn't work at a company that can offer a talentless chud like Steven Crowder a $50 million contract, okay? Because most people don't live in that economic situation. Most Americans don't even, 40% of Americans have an income that's so low, so low that they pay nothing in federal taxes. I, I mean, the inequality might have something to do with the fact that people are deciding, nah, having kids isn't for me, because they can't afford it. There's no social safety net, there's no support at all. Especially when you compare the United States, which is supposed to be the greatest country in the world, to other developed countries, and we're gonna do that right now. First off, fun headline, this is from Slate. And I just really love the choice stock imagery utilized for the story. Surprise, surprise, American parents are the least happy parents in the Western world. How much do you love that stock image? It's great, okay. So uh, here's another one from Time. Many parents are happier than non-parents, but not in the United States. And that story had to do with, um, a, that story had to do with a study that looked at the life satisfaction of 22 Western countries. And they did in fact find that in some parts of the world, uh, yeah, parents are actually happier than non-parents. That's not the case in the United States though. Let me give you the details. A Council of Contemporary Families briefing paper based on a longer peer reviewed report argues that parental discontent is neither global nor inevitable. But in some countries, humans with offspring actually report higher levels of well-being than those without. Now, the researcher here says our results indicate that the parental happiness penalty varies substantially from country to country. In fact, in some countries, such as, oh wow, what a surprise, Norway and Hungary, parents are actually happier than non parents. That's also true on average of parents in such places as Portugal, Finland, Sweden. And Spain, hmm, what do those countries tend to have that the United States doesn't have? At the very bottom of the list of the 22 countries is the United States because this is the country based on this study where parents are 
likely to be less happy than non-parents, okay? Now, of the 22 countries the researchers studied, America has the biggest happiness differential between parents and the child free, meaning that parents are miserable and people who actually decide to not have kids tend to be happier. On average, that's not the case for everyone. Again, if you have certain resources, if you have certain support, might be different, might be easier to raise a kid. But for the vast majority of Americans, no, it is not easy to raise children in this country. In fact, most Americans just do not have the resources to do so, right? The resources to provide the child care so they can go back to work. And please spare me the BS argument about like, oh, the mom should stay home. The mother should stay home. Yeah, except she can't. You need a dual income household to provide for that family. That's the economy we're living in. Let's acknowledge that. Let's get out of our multi-million dollar bubble and acknowledge what the vast majority of Americans are dealing with. If you care so much, and by the way, I don't care if people want to have kids or not at all, okay? You you do you, I do me, okay? I want to live my life. I don't want anyone involved in my personal intimate decisions. I don't want the government involved. I don't want people at the Daily Wire involved. None of your goddamn business. But since they seem to care so much about why people decide to forego having children, I'm just giving you the information you somehow missed while living in this country, okay? So um, it can be largely attributed, going back to that study and, and how the United States is at the bottom of the list when it comes to happiness after having children. It can be largely attributed, says lead author Jennifer Glass, a sociologist at the University of Texas, Austin, to the average cost of childcare for a two year old and the number of paid vacation and sick days people can take a year. In the US, the former is way too high and the latter way too low. Unlike its economically developed counterparts, the United States has done little to offset the cost of raising children and ameliorate the incompatibility between employment and childcare, the study says. And I'm sorry if I'm preaching to the choir. It's just that there's a handful of folks who don't understand this and they need to know. The negative effects of parenthood on happiness were entirely explained by the presence or absence of social policies allowing parents to better combine paid work with family obligations. And this was true for both mothers and fathers. Countries with better family policy packages had no happiness gap between parents and non-parents. None of this should be surprising, folks. And by the way, how much does it cost to raise a child in the United States from age seven to age 18? It's a lot. And when you uh, compare it to Finland, it'll blow your mind. So why don't we start with Finland? Because Finland was one of the top countries when it came to happy parents. And it's easy to understand why when you see the amount of support Finnish parents tend to get. Let's watch. Finland's healthcare system has helped give it the lowest maternal death rate in the world. And it's available here to everyone for next to nothing. Dr. Aiden Tekai is the chief physician on the labor ward. Every mother here gets a private room and even the option of a water birth. 100 euros you will pay and you will, of that you will get almost 50% back as a reimbursement. That's under $60 to have a baby, compared with the US where the average natural birth costs over $12,000 and insurance doesn't cover all of it. The maternal death rate in the US has nearly doubled over the last three decades. In Finland, they've cut it in half and the government also wants parents to spend time with their babies. In Finland, you're guaranteed around four months paid maternity leave by law. And parents can then split another six months paid parental leave, though not at the same time. Four months mandatory paid leave. I mean, minimum, that's the minimum. You get more time after that that you split with your partner. I mean, and when you look at the maternal mortality rate, in the United States compared to countries like Finland. I mean, we're not just talking about making the decision easier for Americans. We're also talking about saving lives when we discuss the importance of these social programs. Now let's compare that to what it's like to be a parent in the United States. If we had had two 
kids in full-time daycare, it would have been a lot more than rent. So that, that's why it just it absolutely wasn't an option. And when we looked at the numbers for full-time nannies in the San Francisco area, they all charge about 80 grand a year. The average family with at least one child under the age of five typically spends around 13% of the family's income on child care, according to a September 2021 Treasury Department report. That's about one out of every eight dollars. That's more than what the average household spends on groceries and nearly double what the government considers affordable for low-income families. That sounds like a tough time to me. And it has been a tough time for many parents, especially during the pandemic, as mothers had an incredibly difficult time going back to work because they couldn't afford childcare for their kids. I mean, the cost of childcare has blown up. In fact, let's go to graphic 16 here. Childcare costs have actually outpaced inflation. In 2020, for instance, childcare expenses rose 5.03% year over year compared to the annual inflation rate of just 1.2% at the time. And it continues to go up. The Build Back Better agenda that Biden barely fought for included funding for child care. It would have alleviated some of this financial burden for parents. But Republicans fought it tooth and nail because I don't know, do they want people to have kids? Because it doesn't seem like it. They certainly don't want to offer any support. And one other thing I want to mention is the cost of raising kids also goes up and seems to be outpacing inflation as well. The US Department of Agriculture published a report using 2015 data that estimated child rearing expenses from birth through age 17 in a two child middle income married couple middle income married couple family is $233,610. So from birth through age 17, meaning it doesn't even take into account the cost of college. And look, Maybe all these conservative public figures had the kind of reaction they did because Chelsea Handler is who Chelsea Handler is. Maybe they see a, a liberal woman and they're like, ah, oh, we gotta pounce. But you know, it seems like Dennis Prager, who's no liberal, seems to agree with her. Let's let's watch. I have zero romanticization of children. Children are among the meanest creatures on earth. How you make a child into a, a, a good adult is the single most important question any society can ask. Essentially, there's no close second. Because we don't start off all that wonderful. Well, Dennis, when it comes to you, you didn't end up all that wonderful either. But hey, hands off the Dennis Prager. Let's attack Chelsea Handler for allegedly being miserable for making a decision that was right for her. And in the meantime, you want people to have babies? You want Americans to feel comfortable starting families? How about you stop gutting what's left of our social safety net? And maybe people feel like their financial situation is stable enough to start that family. In the meantime, I don't want to hear a damn thing from conservatives who laugh at the notion of paid family leave. Because they're not helping, they're just hurting anyone who actually wants to start a family.